Well, Dick Cheney openly wrote the PNAC document September 2000 that would use the clash of civilization by radicalizing Islam and allowing it to invade and attack the West to bring in world government. Well, Obama's actually doing it. This doesn't mean stir up the radical Muslims so you can go blow them up because you want to save America or whatever. No, you go blow them up so they hate you, then you radicalize them, then you bring them in. James Wesley Rawls, one of the top, probably the top survivalist authors and researchers out there, formerly Army Intelligence, uh, and just really knows his stuff. That's why he's so popular. Joins us. You got cut off by the break. Four minutes here, 12 minutes in the next segment. Coming up, we'll start taking some calls. Uh, but James, getting into how big a game changer is it? Repeat what you said and continue. That our own military is all across the board, leaking. Generals are going public. Hey, there's been a purge. Our government's betraying us. They ordered us to back al-Qaeda. I mean, it, it shows there is too far for the system to go. The couch potatoes may not care, but the military and even brass are saying no. That's got to really freak out the establishment. Well, yes, I think it, they should be running for cover right now because when the rank-and-file military and the military leadership wakes up to the gravity of the situation and really takes the blinders off and looks at what's really going on, how they've been played, and what the end result of all this, this, endless, this endless round of deployments is just deployment after deployment after deployment that's tearing apart families, that's wearing down our military, that's wearing us out logistically, that's stretching our, our supply chain to the breaking point, and that's essentially hamstrung us from the ability to fight a conventional war. Well, they can see the setup. So that's the key. Down to it, the, the, everything that's gone on since 9-11 has gutted our military so that when World War III breaks out, it'll just be just like the, the, the out of World War One and outbreak of World War Two, where we're not physically prepared to fight a conventional war on two fronts. We've been involved in counterinsurgency for so long, and we've reorganized and pared down our, our military and worn out our military to the point where we can't fight a two-front conventional war. So the military is used to, at the brass level, Hegelian dialectic and, and dirty tricks and playing people off against each other, but they can see how our own military in America is being degraded, being set up, being prepared. Briefly, we're going to go to break and come back. You can talk more on this, but I know it's hard to see who's going to line up with who in World War III. In many respects, I think it's already started economically and with migrants and with destabilization, Ukraine, all of it, but... What are some of the blocks that we could see allying themselves in World War III? Well, again, it's difficult to predict, but I believe that they're going to try to have a pivot that will, that will put China and Russia as counterpoles and where the Islamic world is um, going to line up with the Russians. Uh, the Russian goal, of course, is to get their long sought after warm sea, warm water port. port. Um, but as, as everything lines up for World War III, you, you're going to see some pretty strange alliances. And it'll be just like Orwell pointed out, where you have country A versus B and teaming up with country C or whatever, and then, and then changing the order for the next World War. We, we could see some pretty strange bedfellows when everything lines up for World War III. And some of the folks that we have long depended upon to be allies may not be there for us. And through the whole process, trillions are made for the central banks. We lose more freedoms. And we start basically sliding in the technocracy even deeper. We're going to come right back in three minutes with our guest. Stay with us. It's a special 28-hour broadcast. Well, even though his Skype, his audio Skype's breaking up a bit, the intel he's laying down, what he says is already unfolding. What's coming is really important information. James Wesley Rawls, survivalblog.com is our guest. Uh, after he leaves us, I'm going to launch into a lot of other news we haven't covered. We're going to be taking your calls for him here in just a moment. 
We're going to be getting into President Obama orders behavioral experiments on the American public in a new executive order. They say that's how they're going to better serve you, is targeting you with conditioning, with brainwashing. Just like the former attorney general told the uh, RTF Association, radio, television, film, he said, it's time to brainwash the public. We don't just do the messages sometimes. We hammer them. Turn in your guns. You can't say boy and girl. Everything's racist. I mean, these people are so evil. And they know they're bad. They don't think they're doing this for some greater good. They want total control. Obama lands in Air Force One and tells Africans they can't have air conditioning or cars. I mean, these people are just so bad. And they can't help it. But so many folks are donating. Hundreds and hundreds of people have donated. We've raised $68,000 so far. But as it, with any money bomb, I count the profit of shopping cart purchases into the money bombs. We're going to be adding that. It's well over $100,000 right now as soon as those calculations go through. And uh, this is what helps fund our operation. Believe me, 50-plus employees and contractors and the insurance and the electricity and the servers and uh, the equipment and the all of it cost us a massive amount of money. To put five hours of radio and TV on television satellite every day to reach every UHF, VHF cable system in the country and to have $10,000 a month, that's what it costs for that many hours, it's about $100 an hour. It's federal law, have to have closed captioning, a person's doing it, we have to have a high def feed to these people, we've got one of the biggest companies doing it, they type it all out so somebody can hit their closed captioning, that's $10,000 a month. It comes out to about $400,000 a year just to pay for the satellite and the closed captioning. Then there's all the rest of it. So when I say I want to raise a million dollars, that's just so we can do this new thing this year, not even expand. I intend to find the hot products, the best things, the, the, the best ways to promote things, to be self-sufficient, selling quality products at low prices, to where I don't have to do this. So I haven't had a money bomb in three years. Uh, but it's fun to do a 24, 26, 27. This is our longest ever 28-hour broadcast. It's fun to do it. The listeners and viewers like it. But it's also about, you know, just saying, hey, we're some of the best outlets there are. We have a responsibility to not just stay the same, but to expand in the face of this craziness. And that's what we're doing. And as soon as this phase is successful, and I've got enough affiliates, and enough advertising revenue uh, to expand, I'm going to get satellites into Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. Then I'm going to get another satellite hitting the South Pacific and Australia and other areas, uh, all counted to get the big mainline satellites and hit the whole populated areas of the world uh, five hours a day at the best prices. We've gone to the big conferences, flown to Chicago, New York, uh, gone to talk to folks in Europe. We, we've got some of the cheapest rates out there. But to do all of that, we're talking about $2.5 million a year just for the satellites and all the rest of the stuff. And we're obviously far from that right now. We're just going to hit Canada and the United States and northern Mexico. And we've already got the affiliates lined up. So go to Infowars.com forward slash affiliates. You want to find out our simple free-to-air contract. Uh, there's, uh, what, 13 minutes of advertising an hour. And we only get three of them. I mean, nobody else does that. Uh, the contract's so easy to sign. And boom, you can rebroadcast it. You can just pull one of the episodes, the nightly news, the radio slash TV. Put it on the weekend, test it out, whatever. We did this because I was internet television before anybody else did it. And people kept saying at affiliates, UHF, VHF affiliates that had AM and FM stations, they'd say, hey, up the production value, we'll put it on TV. And so we did do that. And we've got a bunch of stations, mainly that air us on the weekend and stuff. And it's very popular. Very, 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 very popular. So that's why we're doing this. Okay, uh, James Wesley Rawls is our guest. I want to go to phone calls for him uh, with Eagle Eyes, says he's ex-Army military intel, listening on WNFZ uh, in Tennessee. I want to go to Dan on 9-11 um, issues, listening on Infowar streams. we got a lot of folks, Sam in Kansas, Mitch in Georgia, James in Michigan. We'll be going to your calls here in a minute. Uh, James Wesley Rawls, other points you'd like to make to people about what you're most concerned about, what you see happening, negative things, positive things. We've now entered this time where people that are even halfway awake now know this is for real. I've always known it's for real. I've always hoped we could slow it down or stop it. 
Uh, it's beyond a sick feeling now. I'm not even afraid anymore. I'm just so disgusted with the people that want to be part of this and the collaborators. I mean, they're so openly signing on to evil. It gives me hope our military is trying to say no, but they just still move forward. I mean, it, it, is it, what's it like for you, a veteran, a patriot, a guy who's been fighting this for 20 years, 25 years? What's it like for you? Well, it is very discouraging, but at the same time, it is encouraging to, to watch people wake up, to see that, that people are, have finally lifted the veil and, and are looking at the big picture. They're seeing what's really going on on a macro level. And they're no longer just concerning themselves with local politics, just with individual issues, but the, the larger issues, the big issues like who is really pushing for freedom in the world and who's trying to enslave us. They're looking at that as, as a bottom line issue. And just to back up for a little bit, um, I want to encourage your uh, listeners and viewers to go ahead and make some purchases of things like storage food and nutritional products that will really help your family pull through, because I'm sure you've all heard that there's going to be an orchestrated collapse. Your family needs to be ready for that. And I consider it a great big win-win if you order some of those products through InfoWars. It's a win-win because not only will you be getting your family better prepared, but you're also going to be building a war chest for Alex Jones to get the message out there. Now, to, to get back to your question, I think that um, we are, are living in very perilous times, but it is both discouraging and encouraging because even though we can see the, the drums of war being uh, beaten, we can see uh, the storm clouds of economic catastrophe on the horizon, we can also take heart in the fact that our friends, our neighbors, our relatives, our fellow church congregants are waking up to the big picture. They're getting involved and they're not, they're not going to back down. We also have a two-edged sword with, with um, modern technology in that uh, yes, modern technology is is slowly enslaving us because we now have our own cars and our own computers kind of spying on us. But at the same time, we have technologies like smartphones that are in almost everyone's pockets. And that smartphone is an instrument of liberty. A couple of years ago, uh, one of my sons and I uh, started a free press credentials organization. And our goal there was to get press credentials in the hands of everyone, because in the modern context, everyone that owns a smartphone can be an on-the-ground journalist reporting on what's going on. And I encourage people uh, to get those credentials and get involved. And when you see uh, people's rights getting trampled, pull out your smartphone, turn it on uh, in camera mode and document what's what's going on you can be part of the solution that's right i mean this is just a tool like a gun the enemy is using it to control us we have to use it to expose what they're doing and support good police when they're good go after and expose bad police when they're bad uh but i really see despite the fact they're trying to hire thugs with these psychological actuaries i've seen the police really wake up give us so much good information and the police i run into all over the country are some of the most informed, freaked out people I'm seeing because they get in the coming civil war the globalists want to start that they are going to be put on the chopping block and that the system wants to use the crises that are coming to basically de degrade them, cull them, soften them up, just like they're doing the military. Right. So again, it's, uh, people need to, to wake up, get involved. Uh, the um the free press credentials organization that I mentioned before, folks can find at cfapa.org. That's C-F-A-P-A dot O-R-G. And we're about the only organization out there that will issue free press credentials to anyone. All they have to do is print them out uh, and slap a photograph on there and laminate a, ba a badge and they are ready to get out there. Well, you've been doing a lot to try to save this republic.